Welcome to the year of gingerbread. If you haven't seen before, a couple years ago I did a whole year's worth of holiday trees. We're kind of going along with that theme, but in cookies. So my niece came into town and we made massive quantities of both gingerbread dough and sugar cookie dough. So we had a little variety going on. This particular video, we're actually not gonna do a holiday, but we're going to do a bookshelf out of gingerbread. We weren't the best at measuring perfectly. And honestly, because we double and tripled these recipes, uh, the, in the end, we had to do some hand kneading because there was just too much to fit in our mixer. But it worked out in the end. Make sure to refrigerate them according to the instructions to make them nice and hard. And I'll make sure to include the recipes down in the description. When you're ready, go ahead and roll them out and then cut them to the shapes the measurements you need. We decided to marble the leftovers of what we had of the sugar cookie and gingerbread dough. And I cut out my little mini bookshelf. I wanted to make it bigger, but these were the scraps. So taking them, obviously you're gonna have two sides, a back, shelves, and a little bit more from there. And I'll talk about what went right, what went wrong. And I do plan to make this again, hopefully making an actual template that others can use. If you're interested in that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that like button. So I sorted through these trying to decide uh, what would make it the most structurally sound as well as aesthetically pleasing. And then we're gonna use trusty royal icing, which if, if I'm honest, this is pretty runny because it was sitting in the fridge for a while, kind of separated. I kneaded it together, but not perfectly. So a little bit of cleanup, but it still hardens in the end. Going to secure my back of the bookshelf, give it a little support. And then with each step, I'm adding a little more royal icing to give it a little more security. Adding our sides, and at this point, I am doing it one-sided. My niece came into town and we made tons of dough for all the different holidays, but we didn't get to finish decorating all of them. So this is one that I mostly did on my own. Basically, once the baking was done, that I was on my own. We've got the basic structure. It is not set up yet. And I wanna add the first shelf there that's not the base. And I made these little spacers. This bottom one, we're actually going to cement in there to give it a little bit more support. For this size, I don't, you probably don't need that extra support for the weight of the books that go on the shelves, but I figured better safe than sorry. And the sides are not solidified yet to try to help it uh, sneak that shelf in there without scraping off and making a mess with all the icing. I still kind of <laughs> made a mess there, but it was easy cleanup and that would be covered up by books anyway. And then not gluing them in, I did use a couple more little spacers on the side to help support the weight, to help it not teeter off to the side and dry lopsided. And then once it's more set, I'm gonna put on the other two shelves. This next one, I'm not going to glue in the support piece, or I should say the spacer. Slide that in there. And this is about the point where I realize <laughs> I did not measure correctly. And the top shelf is gonna be way larger than the other two. My spacers were just 
not tall enough or I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong, but it is what it is. I'm going to hold that, let that dry. And then for the books, what are we going to do here? Well, I thought it was brilliant. We're going to make cookie books naturally. So I'm going to make front, back, spine, we're going to glue them together and then I can stuff them with something tasty like a ganache or some other treat. But you can see here, it is messy. It is not looking good. It is not efficient. I abandoned the cookie books as much fun as they would have been. So this puppy is completely dry. Of course, we got the <laughs> wonky spacing and all the extra spacers taken out that aren't glued in. And we're going to make books out of candy. So we're going to toss those aside. And then uh, for us, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, hi to... I only had a couple of flavors and colors of that. Mamba were my favorite. Now and later were a close second. Starburst, pretty good. These little guys, I think, make good like little diaries or children's books or smaller. Didn't end up using these. First of all, I want to mention it's it's two mamas deep. That that is one mamba deep too much. <laughs> of course, I had planned to go with the cookies, and the cookies were supposed to turn out a little bit bigger. So in the end, you want to make your bookshelf with the dimensions of what will be your books in mind, because this is annoying. They kept wanting to fall back or get pushed back too easily. But I still think it's fun seeing all the different colors here. You know, they, most of these are more square or even if they are rectangle like a book, they're not the, the right dimensions. But ultimately, you only see the one side like a spine. And it's fun to have a variety of Thicker, thinner, taller, shorter. This could be like an advent calendar where you, you have, you know, so many candies that you put on there and you can just take a little one off each time. Of course, you could secure them in with royal icing if you want. Don't have to. And just try to pick the nicest looking side on that last one. The pink one, uh, there's like some bubbles in the way the candy had formed. And also, gotta love those now and laters. Always eating a little bit of paper with it. <laughs> and so if you don't want that paper on the spine, try to go for a different one. Let me know if there's a candy that we didn't think of that you think would work just as good, if not better, to add a little variety. These don't all look perfect, but... They're fun little additions, like I said, little journal, kids' books. And then some magical fast forwarding. There is our completed unwrapped version. What do you think? I had to ask myself, would I like it better if I had kept the candy wrapped? This angle's not great, but it also minimizes that giant gap. You could also use like fondant to make a vase with flowers, that kind of thing. Little knickknacks on the shelves. But I really like the vibrancy of the actual wrappers and the fact that they have different designs, kind of like books have different designs on the spines. Let me know, which is your favorite? I think they're both fun, just in different ways. And I will be making at least one or two different versions down the road with templates and everything. Don't forget to subscribe for more crafting and cooking idea videos and for upcoming Year of Gingerbread content. And if you like books, consider checking out the books I've authored as well as the reading journals I've designed. Happy baking and happy reading and eating.